Hello, Alaska. Welcome to my Washington, D.C. office. Now, as many of you know, we're celebrating Alaska Day this month. It's on October 18th. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to wish you all a great Alaska Day. I wish that I could be home to celebrate with you, but that's not happening. As many of you know, Alaska Day is the anniversary of the formal transfer of the Alaska Territory from Russia to the United States. This transfer was arranged in 1867 when commissioners arrived at Fort Sitka to hold an official flag-raising ceremony. There were 250 uniformed U.S. soldiers at the ceremony when Russian soldiers lowered the Russian flag and the U.S. flag was raised. This story is not only a wonderful part of Alaska's history, but also of our nation's history. In honor of our special day, I thought I'd take you on a quick tour of my office here in Washington, D.C., and show you some of the special and very unique Alaska items that help make all of us Alaskans feel more at home. Well, we're here in, in our conference room. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is called Raven Stealing the Sun, and it's a, it's a clinket Athabascan carving um, carved out of yellow cedar, um, obviously from southeastern Alaska. But you've got the raven in the background with the sun, uh, stealing, s raven stealing the sun, so you've got the moon in the belly of, of the raven here. This piece was carved by Nick Vonda, he's a Clinket, and uh, Dwayne Price is an Athabascan, and um, historically the Athabascans and the, and the Clinkets uh, were, were fierce competitors. Uh, so the fact that the two have come together to carve this piece um, is really quite telling. You've got inlaid abalone uh, inset throughout the piece, but uh, again, it's, it's a remarkable piece coming out of southeastern. We've also got the, uh, the, the clinket paddles um, that are also quite spectacular that we hang here in our main conference room. Well, here's, uh, here's one of the real prizes in the conference room here. This is a Kenai king salmon that I brought out of the river on the 6th of July, uh, excuse me, it was the 7th of July, 2006. Walter, as I have dubbed him, is a 63-pound king salmon. And uh, as all good Alaskans, you know, when you catch a beautiful fish like this, first you share it with everybody. Uh, but I've been fishing on the Kenai for my whole life, fishing down in southeast, and I've never caught a king salmon as, as beautiful as this one. So we decided to mount it. And I think it's fair to say that Walter, this king salmon, is probably the most photographed fish here in the nation's capital. Uh, whether it's constituents from Alaska that are coming in, we have a visit and have a chance to take a picture, this is the backdrop that they, that they prefer. Um, we have world leaders come in to visit, and they want to have their picture taken in front of this magnificent fish. So uh, he's very, very proudly displayed here in our front conference room. And here's the doll corner, also still in the conference room, but uh, what I have in this corner is something that, that really brings a, a personal smile to my face because there are stories behind each and every one of these dolls. I have collected um, these, these beautiful pieces of, of native artwork over the years, um, many uh, I purchase when I'm up in the state for, for AFN convention. Um, this, this row of dolls here comes from the Paniak family. Rosalie Paniak is a very, very uh, skilled and, and um, uh, incredible doll maker from Chivak. She passed away several years ago, but I was uh, visiting with her at AFN talking about um, the, the, the dolls and, and how she has taken her skill and her craft and passed it down to her daughter and to her granddaughter. So uh, the first year I, I purchased uh, this one from, from Rosalie and uh, uh, this one, the, the caroler, Christmas caroler, uh, was made by Rosalie's daughter. And then last year at AFN I purchased this doll from Rosalie's granddaughter, and I believe that she was 11 or 12 last year, and this was the first doll that she's made, but she's taken the same, the same skills that her grandmother taught her to make this. And I said, well, what's the story behind this, this 
bag made out of out of out of seal gut here and she says well this she's this is her walking stick and this is the little the little girl that's telling me the story she's walking down to mail her permanent fund application but uh, again beautiful beautiful dolls with stories behind each one of them uh, different um, different areas of the country clearly and then on this this lower row here you can see the dolls from different parts of the state this one here is Athabascan it's uh, the, the clothing is made out of moose hide this uh, this is an incredible doll here that um, you can see the handiwork with the with the beads on the slippers and uh, on the parka little blueberries in the basket that she's carrying um, but incredible incredible work with the the seal skin and then the carved uh, carved ivory face beautiful beautiful handiwork also um, on this shelf I, I need to point out the basket on the top because it's incredibly unique that is uh, that is a basket that I received um, at AFN several years ago it's made out of, of salmon skins that have been dried and stitched together an incredible incredible piece of, of, of art that um, isn't isn't commonly seen but it's just such an honor to be able to display uh, craftsmanship like this uh, to Alaskans as they come and visit me and knowing that there's there is such a personal story behind each one of these these great works of art well now we've left the conference room and we're in my personal office and this is yet another one of Alaska's treasures. Uh, this totem pole, 10-foot totem pole, uh, is carved by a clinket carver out of southeastern Alaska by the name of Israel Shotridge. And, and Israel um, carved this in honor of his mother, uh, a, a very uh, noted uh, clinket uh, woman who um, taught in the, in the university, um, a, a very incredible woman. And as a tribute to her, he carved Mother Brown Bear House. And if you look to some of the details on the totem pole, you'll see faces in the hands and up top. Those faces represent um, the, the children of Israel Shotridge's mother. The, the abalone that is inset is an indicator of the significance of the stature of, of his mother. But, but again, a very, very special piece for us. And to have this uh, in my office, this piece is actually on loan to us from Sea Alaska Corporation, is, um, is really quite a distinction and an honor to have this here. So you've had an opportunity to look at just a few of the, uh, of the notable items that we have on display here in my office in Washington, D.C. I hope you've enjoyed this little peek inside, but uh, it's a great opportunity to be with you, to share some things, and again, to wish you all a happy Alaska Day.